It's one of those classic sci-fi movies where aliens come to Earth and start wrecking everything. Why? Who knows? Who cares? So long as it looks good and the humans win in the end. Yes, we're talking about Earth versus the flying saucers, and this is Sign 5. Earth vs. the Flying Saucers was inspired by a 1953 non-fiction book entitled Flying Saucers from Outer Space by Major Donald Kehoe, which was written in an era when the flying saucer phenomenon, as well as the aliens contained within them, was a highly lucrative concept for Hollywood to exploit. The film's story focuses on various alien spacecraft appearing at sporadic moments around the world as they shoot down a number of newly launched satellites which they consider to be hostile. Upon landing at the satellite launch site, the aliens are fired upon by the base's security personnel killing one of them. As a consequence, the aliens quickly retaliate by force. Thus, what started off being an apparent misunderstanding and communication quickly escalates into a full-scale war. In what is a classic example of a plot misdirect, the aliens are initially portrayed as being a peaceful species whose aim is to find a suitable location on the Earth to settle down which is what Russell Marvin, the hero of the story, and the audience are supposed to believe. Yet as the story develops, it becomes clear their intention is far more sinister, even though it was the humans who initiated the conflict by firing on the aliens without provocation. As was often the case in American sci-fi films of the 50s, the US military tended to feature quite prominently, and in most cases operated with the mindset of shoot first and ask questions later, and this film was no different. Somewhat ironically, in the early part of the film the aggressive attitude of the military is clearly at odds with the audience who are siding with Marvin's more passive and scientific approach, especially as he attempts to contact the aliens to better understand why they are on Earth. Yet as the motives of the aliens becomes more apparent, the audience, and indeed Marvin himself, actually sides with the military's actions. Yet it's not the big guns or the nukes that save the day, it's actually the scientists who work out a solution to stop those pesky sources, proving once again that mind over muscle is triumphant. Needless to say, the very title of the film indicates it's a war movie. Therefore, having the alien spacecraft shaped like a disc was a quick way of convincing the audience the vehicle had hostile intent. Even its very design, featuring neither a discernible front nor obvious cockpit, clearly makes the ship somewhat intimidating on a psychological level. With that in mind, it's perhaps somewhat ironic it was the humans themselves who travelled in a saucer-shaped vehicle in Forbidden Planet, also released in 1956. In any event, the actual designs used in the film were inspired by eyewitness descriptions of UFOs as featured in Major Kehoe's book. Yet there's another facet of the film which makes it look far more impressive and expensive than it really is, and that's the use of stock footage, which was a common practice for movies of the time. For anyone who loves their military hardware, the film features copious amounts of rocket launchers, US weapons doing what they do best, and the film even features real aircraft incidents that actually resulted in human fatalities. Furthermore, it's interesting to note that when the aliens fire upon human forces, the unwitting victims effectively vanish from sight in a blaze of bright light, thus ensuring the film isn't forced to show a number of charred American corpses, whilst buildings and structures get the full mega demolition treatment. Yet without doubt, one of the reasons why the film is so highly regarded is due to the outstanding visual effects work of Ray Harryhausen. Although it's quite common for films today to show invading aliens destroying all sorts of city landmarks in a kaleidoscope of visual effects, in 1956, seeing a full-scale battle between the sources and the military would have been a real spectacle in the cinema. In addition, alongside the flying sources are the aliens themselves, who are shown to have a unique exterior black suit with very few moving joints in their limbs. Admittedly, they aren't anywhere near as famous as Gort from the day the Earth stood still, but much like War of the Worlds, not only are we privy to seeing their actual faces, but their technology is discussed in detail, which would have both transfixed and bamboozled 1950s audiences. Finally, there's the somewhat ambiguous ending of the movie, where it's hinted the aliens might someday return. But clearly, that was going to be another filmmaker's problem. For many people, Earth vs. the Flying Saucers would rank in the top five of their sci-fi movies of the 1950s, mainly because the visual effects sequences are so memorable that most people struggle to remember anything else about the movie. But hey, that's why it works. See you next time for another Sci-Fi Spective.